welcome to this webinar on multispectral phenotyping for plants, um, methods and be benefits and use case. So today uh, you will have at the same time myself, so Alexis Komar, which I'm the CEO and founder of Hyphen, and Thierry. Hello, Thierry. Hello, hello, Alexis. So yes, I, I, I'm Thierry, the, the sales manager of Cilios, and uh, I've been in the sales of high-tech systems on product worldwide for more than 30 years so you may see it at my gray hair but uh, since 2005 i'm in charge of the the sales of uh, two line of products of micro optics products of Cilios technology and uh, i mean diffractive optics on multispectral imaging and the later used in smart farming and agrofood industry being the topic of today's webinar so thank you uh, alexi for inviting me in presenting also with so you so, uh, well, let's start by the introduction of Cilios then. Sorry. Okay. So, Cilios, uh, who we are, we are a small company, about 10 people, uh, born in 2001 and locating near in Saint Provence. So, uh, quite nice area, if you can imagine. And uh, our core business is micro optics. So, micro optics to do what? To do. Uh, to do what to do uh, two lines of product uh, made with the same uh, manufacturing techniques and the first one being the diffractive optical element that we started with and that is uh, let's say faceplate for the scientific and industrial lasers so for petawatt laser intense laser for astronomy for the very large telescope and for space for astronomy in space so embedded component and second line of product, which will be the, the most part of the topic today. Uh, it's multispectral camera on sensors so multispectral imaging, thanks to our technology called Color Shades. So well, now the, the floor is yours. Alex. Thank you, uh, Thierry. So I'll introduce uh, very quickly Hyphen as well for people that uh, don't know it. Hyphen is a company specialized in uh, high throughput typing. So we design solutions to measure plants, uh, to measure plants uh, at every scale, so from satellites to drone to, to any types of, of sensors, and by automatizing completely the processes. So we can work at the same time with systems that are made uh, by other um, companies, such as drones, where today DJI has the whole market, as well as with custom-made devices. Um, and we will see them later in this presentation. Uh, to solve some um, of your challenges. Uh, maybe we can mention that we are working mainly with three types of, uh, three to four types of customers. The first one are seed breeders for to help them high throughput phenotype their, their trials uh, in order to select the best plants. Um, product evaluation, uh, so all what is uh, crop protection issues. We also work a lot with the agro industries. So agro industries is all um, use cases such as Mois Chandon, where we're going to evaluate the quality of the harvest. And finally, we work also a lot with researchers to make uh, dedicated systems for that. So today, uh, our talk is about uh, multispectral imaging. And I first would like to uh, re-put uh, multispectral imaging in its context. So um, why? <laughs> Is multispectral imaging important for phenotyping? So first, I would like to go back to the basics of the basics. Huh? Uh, what is phenotyping? Phenotyping is the characteristics of the plants. Uh, those characteristics of the plants um, is the results of the genotypes of the genome of the plants uh, evolving in a certain environment with this formula that we know phenotype equals genotypes times environments. And a phenotype is actually a sum of traits, uh, traits that can be extremely diverse uh, from leaf area to tree plant volume, organs numbers, um, quantity of light intercepted by the canopy, uh, chlorophyll content, uh, disease reaction, uh, early vigor, etc. And all those traits actually are going to be measured um, with sensors. And so, uh, uh, that's where multispectral com comes in. So, so a trait is really, uh, in my sense, a biophysical meaning. So it's something that explains how 
of a plant is. It's really a characteristic of a plant that you can measure. And you're extracting this trait from a sensor, which can be any type of sensor. No? You can use an RGB camera, you can use uh, LIDARs, you can use um, all the types of sensors you have. Um, and in our case, we'll see what we can do with a multispectral camera. And of course, on top of a sensor, you need the method. So how am I extracting this data? And we're going to explore that slightly in details right now. So first for the traits, uh, it, it's always very tricky because uh, there's a lot of ways to, to try to uh, summarize the traits. I, I like the idea to try to put some categories and at least to try to, 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 to think a little bit of the use cases. So uh, depending on who you're working, for breeders, uh, crop protections, uh, or others, I, I invite you to, to look at our webinars really discussing about the use cases. But in, in my sense, we could uh, try to look at four types of big traits, uh, what I would call plant dyna dynamics. So, you know, senescent speed, uh, green cover fraction, etc. Uh, harvest index and quality. So that will be all what is organ count and all those formula to try to decompose uh, the yield in, in a smart way, stresses, whether they're biotic or abiotic. And when they're abiotic, generally they're strongly impacting uh, plant dynamics. Uh, and, and of course, and, and this is a little bit less intuitive, but one of the traits that are the most interesting for, um, for, for some breeders or even in, for other people is the trial quality. So are my is by environment uh, stable enough uh, with the soil and any types of uh, other external factors that will influence uh, the quality of uh, the data I extract on the flowers uh, and on yield, of course. Um, when we speak about the method, I like to see actually uh, ways to extract traits with three main different methods. The first one, which is the most uh, uh, intuitive and probably where people are using it the most, is what we will call geometric or mathematical interpretation. So this is really uh, something where you can make equations. The, the basics is NDVI, so normal difference vegetation index. It's just a ratio of bands of uh, red and near infrared. And it's really something that is mathematical. But we can go further than that. We can speak about height, about bow volume. We can also look at um, some ways of segmenting, uh, by example, using uh, vegetation indices. And to be completely fair, until more or less 2016, uh, everything was done, all phenotyping was done with geometrical and mathematical equations. Uh, another uh, way is to try to use models. So it's to model um, a, a complex uh, system and to try to uh, invert this model to retrieve uh, uh, relevant traits. Uh, for that, I like to use the, the, the most classical model in remote sensing, which is prospect and pro sales. So prospect is a model that simulates the reflectance of a leaf depending on its chlorophyll content and on its um, uh, so mainly and water content. So mainly it's those two things and there's two other parameters, which is a structural parameter and, and um, matter content. So, so that's prospect and sale that will simulate uh, a canopy reflectance depending on the leaves quantity. So what we call LAI, leaf area index and the average leaf angle. So how the angles of the leaves are made. And of course, you can combine those two models to make ProSale. ProSale being able to simulate the reflectance of the vegetation depending on the LAI, the average leaf angle, chlorophyll content, and water content. And so you're going to make an inversion, whether using um, neuronal networks, uh, lookup tables, or whatever, and you're going to retrieve uh, such metrics. This is extremely used, this, those methods are extremely used in uh, remote sensing. They're not that used in, in phenotyping for many reasons that we will be able to discuss later on. Uh, the third method is machine learning. So machine learning is, is really all this, this massive amount uh, of ways to uh, have a training data set 
and use this training data set to extract features. So uh, machine learning is really about having a, um, a training data set. And then you have different methods that are more or less powerful <laughs> to be able to extract the traits, uh, decision trees, uh, SVM, uh, PLS, and of course, deep learning are probably the main method that I will include in machine learning. So once we presented uh, the traits and the methods, <laughs> comes the sensors, and today we're really going to focus on uh, Cilios technology, so on a Cilios multispectral camera, which is able to, to measure, and uh, Thierry will present that later on, uh, on wave bands from uh, visible to near infrared. And, and, and we will see some use cases later on, but it's really, in my sense, uh, really useful for all what is going to be uh, disease detection, vegetation indices, of course, chlorophyll content, and, and, and maybe you can help us uh, finding some of our use cases. We could work with you uh, with this camera. So when you look at the sixth dimension of phen phenotyping, so uh, please go and see our YouTube channel where we describe the sixth dimension, uh, where you're having uh, the, the imagery with X, Y, uh, the 3D imagery with Z, the wave bands, the direction of the sensors and of the light source and the time, whether you're doing it at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, sometimes you're having seconds, uh, plant can react uh, within seconds or milliseconds to some stressors. Uh, within those um, six dimensions of phenotyping, we will really focus on the three dimensions, which is a multispectral images. So let's go now into having a more in-depth vision of what the Cilios um, multispectral camera looks like, uh, Thierry. Yeah. yeah, and I'm going to speak about, let's say, first of all, I'm going to uh, address the different uh, technology that are commonly used in uh, agrofield agro uh, uh, applications. Uh, you can see, let's say, two main difference uh, multispectral uh, imaging system, one being uh, using in what we call a push boom mode, and other being uh, used in a snapshot. Snapshot is like your standard RGB camera that you that you use. Um, uh, let's say link to link to this uh, working mode. Uh, you clearly see that uh, the push broom uh, types of camera are based on uh, diffraction gratings, gratings or prisms <laughs> to split the wavelengths. So the the multispectral is made by the splitting of the of the wavelengths uh, of the of, of the of the signal uh, onto a detector, 1D or 2D detector. The other with the filter technology. It's in fact uh, the um, here you have, uh, for instance, a filter wheel. So one filter, the way the let's say the the, the image uh, is uh, filtered by one filter, and the, the the filter is rotating to have another wavelength. So the the spectral is reconstructed by turning the filter wheel. Also, you can have here uh, let's say multi uh, sensor, each with one filter. And finally, our technology where we place uh, the filter directly onto the, the, the detector of the, uh, let's say, in that case, uh, of a CMOS detector. So, in fact, each filter of the, each pixel of the, of the sensor sees a different filter. It's a kind of biomatrix. So, the, 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 the main drawback of that is, of the, let's say, of the grating on prism uh, types of cameras or sensors. Is that well here? Of course, it's a point scan. So with a linear detector, it just, uh, in fact, a spectrometer that you can have, uh, you can place onto your complete uh, scene. Here, it's it's uh, let's say a grating that split on with a 2D detector, so that you get the image by moving the sensor over over the scene. So this is the type of camera, and also another type with the push broom uh, type application. The big drawback of those cameras uh, is that they are bulky, bulky, heavy. So it's not, uh, um, in fact, you don't have the, the scene in, in synchron synchronously. You, you need to, have to, to get the image uh, sequentially. Uh, 
coming back to the then the snapshot you have the it is a synchronous method so you get the image uh on any part of the sensor simultaneously the the difference the big difference between our techno or let's say the filter biometrics techno uh on the uh filter wheel is that here you have a mechanical part and is sequentially the image is made uh, let's say the hypercube is made uh, sequentially uh, here you've got uh, your hypercube simultaneously like for this for for the for this uh, this type of uh, camera but here you have the, the problem of that each wavelength does not see the same scene so you have a parallax problem to compensate in a way or other so at the end uh, the big interest also of this camera of this type of sensor is that uh, we just place a piece of glass a small piece of glass that does not change the weight and the footprint this is it okay so that means that uh, for let's say drone application or robots application for proximity detection or other it's very important that it is very compact on lightweight in addition in, in in addition to the fact that you've got the same scene pair wavelengths so let's say globally and there are also other techniques of multispectral but that's the one that are most commonly used in uh, in, in 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 agriculture precision agriculture or agro food industry so now coming back more into detail in our technology which is called color shades so uh, this is the, the type of, uh, uh, let's say, spectral response of our, of our uh, filter. Uh, we have, uh, let's say, a transmission which is between 40 to 70 uh, percent. Uh, a, a spectral resolution that can be calibrated between 20 to 60 nanometer. <clears throat> Just as an example, a standard RGB is 100 nanometer. It's 100 nanometer for the red, green, and for the blue. And also, uh, they can address, uh, this, this technology, uh, technology can address only a 300 nanometer uh, global spectral range. So 400, 700, 500, 800, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but that you will see that we have broken this sound of barrier thanks to with the toucan. So, but I will disclose that later on. And, um, our filters are deliberately, uh, let's say, uh, large spectrally. I would say large because uh, compared compared to the uh, five nano or ten nano uh, spectral width, uh, it's because all those uh, filters are interference filter. That means that they are sensitive to the incidence of light. So if you have you use a, a very narrow filter with the light coming with a certain angle. The, the, in fact, those, your detector sees another wavelength. So there is a wavelength shift. And thanks to that, to the fact that we have something quite wide, we can work with optic, with let's say lenses, objective, etc., with aperture up to f2. So let's say plus or minus uh, 20 degrees without any change in the wavelengths. And every, so uh, that's, that's one very big important point. And the second point, which is also interesting, is that due to the, the high integrated transmission, of course, you have more sensitive sensitivity to, to the light. And this is of, then the filter techno, but again, to arrive to a, to a detector, we have developed, uh, uh, let's say, a specific alignment bench uh, to, in fact, place the filter onto the CMOS detector, for CMOS for Visnir, but it's in gas for the shortwave infrared uh, wavelengths. But in that case, it's CMOS, CMOS detector. So, and then we align filter, pixel filter onto the pixel CMOS. And we replicate all over this, all over the, the complete sensor. So with your standard, just an example, with your standard RGB, it's uh, the, the macro pixel is uh, R, G, G, B. Here you can have lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, let's say by 4, 3 by 3, okay? And this is replicated, okay? So and, uh, the big interest of our uh, of Cilios technology 
because there are also some similar technology that exist uh, with the filtering filter deposited onto the, the detector. But they work at the wafer level, so at the, let's say, imager wafer level, and we work at the single package detector, as I already showed you. And the interest of that, working that, is that we deposit our filter onto the micro lens array. This means that any light that passes through the filter is focused only on the sensitive part of the pixel, because in the same way, there is the sensitive part of the pixel plus the electronics of the pixel. So here, there is no light that is lost uh, uh, due, to the, to, due to the fact that we keep the micro lens array function. Okay, so that's also uh, one very important point compared to the people that work at the wafer level because they cannot place the micro lens function. So functions they can cannot let the micro lens onto the detector before placing the, the the filter, and then half of the light, in fact, is lost on the electronics of the pixel. So that's also one very important point of our techno. So the our techno is a mix of two techno. One is the filtering techno, which is called color shade, and the other one is the uh, hybridization of the filter onto the detector. So uh, then uh, with the uh, this techno, we have put on the market, let's say, of the shelf camera uh, for the 300 nanobands, uh, let's say, spectral range that uh, I spoke to you previously. And in the agro uh, agriculture or precision farming, or I don't know how you can call it, uh, or agro food industry, the mostly used is this one. Let's say the the the, the, mo the V model, uh, because it works from 550 up to 830. So very common. You have, of course, your uh, you can calculate your NDVI index on other, let's say, uh, specific index uh, thanks to that camera. And uh, to give you a, 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 an example and also uh, let's say uh, an ex a demonstration that it is a lightweight and uh, compact. You see just the camera. Uh, this is the camera. This is one, the CMS. And this is the equivalent in CMS4, so the same spectrally, but uh, 4.2 megapixels, so 3.5 more spatial resolution. And uh, coming now to the to, to Caen, how why is it a revolution? It's because we have broken, uh, let's say, the 300 nanometer barrier. Uh, with this uh, with this camera, due to some physics, uh, let's say hardware and software tricks, and now with this camera, which is the Tucan, so it's the same size, the same weight uh, of a CMS4, okay, the Tucan, and it covers from now from 400 to 900. So this means that uh, this is the only one. A camera uh, available of that of, of that type available in the market currently. There is no other uh, Vis Plus Near snapshot multispectral camera on the market. So, uh, and this camera is interesting in the sense that it provides, in fact, the blue color in addition to what the V, uh, so say 400, 500 to 800, propose. So it gives additional information for the for the phenotyping. And this camera is, in fact, using having 10 spectral bands, 4.2 uh, megapixels resolution, and then uh, 10 bits uh, resolution. And again, for let's say people who have uh, drones or uh, <clears throat> or let's say uh, let's say robots uh, application, uh, this is a very lightweight camera, 180 camera, and about uh, let's say. 50 by 50 by 50 centimeter cube. So, so again, this is a, let's say a unique vis vis uh, vis near vis plus near uh, camera, and it's the only one on the type available on the market today. So I'm sorry for repeating that, but it's true. <laughs> Maybe it will not be true in one in one or two years, but currently we are the one having find how to do to extend the range to 500 nanometer. And 
again, also what we what we propose together with our camera, we always propose, let's say, our uh, software development kits. We call it Colossus Lab uh, for free together with the camera, which uh, let's say made easy make easy the multi spectral ex extraction. So this is some example of windows of a. Uh, of, of our software. So here you can see that you can have the nine wavelengths uh, images of the of the camera because the, uh, for for the let's say for the, the CMS on CMS4 for, for the two core, it's a bit different because you have 10 wavelengths. So it's a bit more complex. You have some images that are double or triple. But anyway, you can have uh, a full image at any wavelengths uh, of the scene. Also, uh, an interesting uh, thing is that, on, for instance, here on the color image, uh, you can have, you select a zone and you can have a spectrum extraction. So in that case, we were looking at the, the, the leaves of that tree uh, on our parking. It's not a beautiful uh, image, but at least it's explicit. Then here you, you see everything that contain uh, chlorophyll. So here the herbs, here the leaves, here the leaves, some grass here, etc., etc. So that's a, uh, this, uh, let's say, software is supplied for free for to the customer so that they can develop their application uh, directly from it because the hypercube extraction uh, is made uh, thanks within this software. Thank you, Thierry. Thierry. So You're now welcome. let's explore some concrete examples where uh, Hyphen products such as uh, Phenoscale, Phenomobile, or Phenostation could make use of a multispectral camera uh, described by Cilios. So let's start by Phenoscale. So Phenoscale is our uh, drone solution. So today, uh, to be fully fair, um, on the drone solution, uh, Hyphen were quite agnostic with the type of multispectral technology. It does allow you to uh, have, um, to, I mean, multispectral data is, is sometimes really, really relevant for disease detection, leafery index, take green, senescence, blood quality, green, green fraction, vegetation indices, of course, all the ones that are not heard, RGB and chlorophyll. Um, often, and, and that's what we will need uh, to, to explore with you if you're interested by such technology, is uh, in which use case does the, 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 the Toucan um, is, uh, is competitive towards the, let's say, mainstream camera today out there, such as the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, I do believe there are some niche markets available, and so please don't hesitate to come and speak with us. Um, one of the things that seems to me really important and that uh, we have been doing very little up to now um, in the multispectral space is to segment different pixels. So, so what we want actually is, or you do a basic remote sensing where you're having one uh, vegetation indices for your microplot or for your, for, for your entity of surface, or you try to segmentate. So to uh, look at the spectral signature of each element separately. And, and this uh, we've published a lot of in high on, on that topic. Uh, lately, and I do believe that there is a lot of room for improvements uh, that are really cool. Uh, the other solution that we have is what we call the Fenostation. So the Fenostation is really a system where we can put different sensors uh, depending on your need, uh, where uh, we will extract the features that you are looking for. And there, really, I do believe that for chlorophyll, nitrogen, uh, and disease evaluation, the, the, the Toucan has a, a, a real edge. Um, same type of, uh, of, of different paper, but same times of, of uh, analysis. What we have been studying a lot with those types of technologies to say, okay, if we take, uh, if we have more resolution and if we have uh, vegetation indices, or those vegetation indices um, as well correlated to chlorophyll depending on the resolution you're able to have, so compared to spectrometer. And what we've shown is that there are some uh, vegetation indices that are really bad at a remote sensing stage that can become really, really relevant at, um, at a phenostation scale 
because they will be extremely well correlated with chlorophyll contents when you get rid of the uh, of, uh, background. And finally, and that's where I think uh, the Tukong will and is already uh, the most employed is on um, embedded is embedded on, on some systems. Uh, in the case of uh, hyphen is uh, the phenomobile. And there, uh, the, the main use case I see, even if all the other use cases I cited uh, are true as well, is disease detection, where actually um, it is for some disease way easier to see uh, the, the, the necrosis uh, with uh, multispectral images than with, with RGB uh, camera. So there's a huge debate. Sometimes it's going to be polarized light. Sometimes it's going to be multispectral data. Uh, let's be very modest. It really depends on the use case. But uh, there's a really sweet spot there. And we are uh, super excited to explore your use cases um, with such system. And yeah, and so the last uh, slide is a paper we published on, on Sarcospora uh, evaluation at different wave bands. And what we can really see is that, uh, yes, we can detect things uh, very well with RGB already, but it does bring uh, a little bit more to have uh, multispectral data on top of it. So here, so, so that was a way to explore very quickly uh, in the time, so half an hour, all the use cases we can see uh, combining uh, hyphen and Cilios uh, systems. Um, uh, thank you for listening to us.